Hi guys, welcome back to Plumber Parts. My name's James. Finally, I'm back in the bathroom, the bathroom renovation series. Now you guys probably thought, oh, he's just carried on and done his bathroom without showing us any of how it's happened, any of how it works. Well, I'm afraid that's not true. I've been flat out doing work and not getting in the bathroom and slowly eroding away the goodwill that my wife has for me by not doing it. So we're back in here today. Uh, it's a very, very small job that we're gonna be doing today, but it's one that's gonna enable us to quickly get on with any remaining jobs in the bathroom itself. What we're gonna do today in this video is cut in a isolation valve on the hot and the cold and also on the hot water return to make sure that we can quick and easily turn all the water off and all the services off when we need to do any more work. And that is gonna be a couple of times at least when we're laying the floor down. So let's get on with it. Along the way, I'll be talking to you about what we're gonna be doing on the channel as well. Oh yeah, and all the tools I use in this video, all of which are incredibly sexy, you can buy on our Amazon store, links below. So currently, every time I need to turn the water off or the hot water and the cold water, I have to try and get this loft hatch up, which is another job I've got to do. Don't tell the wife, please. <laughs> then I've got to get the steps down. And I know what a lot of you are gonna say. You're gonna say, Jimmy, you must have had the water off and on and off a million times. Why did you not do this earlier? Well, it's just because I didn't, all right? Sometimes that's life. The annoying thing about this is every time I want to do any work, any time I've got a problem or anything like that, I need to pop up into the loft to turn the water off. Now, we're going to change that now. Oh, the loft. Where is the wires? That's better. Right, so for my system here, I actually fitted this on this channel uh, not long ago. But what we're gonna do is we've got our mains cold coming in, it's coming into a pressure reducing valve or pressure regulating valve. Um, we then got our accumulator here that accumulates pressure. Our big Stuart Turner beast just sat there doing a great job. Um, and then we've got the feed out. This will be our balanced feed out. So what we're gonna do is shut this valve here like that. And also, just in case, I'm gonna unplug our secondary return pump. While we're up here, I can now look and go right which pipes are the ones that I want to turn off. So we've got our cold water out that I've marked, our hot water out that I've marked, and also our hot water return. These pipes correlate exactly with the pipes in the little airing cupboard downstairs, just below us, where I want to put my valves. So that's what we're gonna do. And I'm gonna put a little indicator on the valves as well to say, if you wanna valve this lot off, there's a secondary return hot water pump that will need turning off. I'll leave a link to the video about installing that secondary return hot water pump and also how they work in the description below and also in the top pinned comment. Oh yeah, baby. A pipe, but sometimes it's nice for you to sort of find out a few other little bits and bobs along the way rather than just, you know, that exact bit. I will chapter the video, so you can just click straight to it if you want. Don't wanna waste your time if I don't have to. Oh, uh, you're going, are you going? I'll let you be on another Plumber Parts video. Tori's still doing my hair after all these years. Look at you both. Yeah, I've got to do a water softener. Bloody. I mean, come on. Anyway, so here's where we're gonna be installing these. As you can see, this airing cupboard ain't anywhere near finished, is it? It's just another job in the long list of beautiful, fun jobs I have ahead of me. But we know that what we want to do in a minute's time is put a 15 millimeter valve on there, a 22 mil valve on there, and a 22 mil, mil valve on there. That will mean that A, I can turn the water off really quickly if I have to, and so can Emily if there's a problem. But also that will mean you've got quite a lot of pressure built up, built up in the hot water vessel, sorry, the hot water tank. And when you turn off that valve there, I'm still yet to dissipate all that pressure every time I turn the water off. I won't need to do that now if I've got valves just in there. And I'll show you what I mean by that now. So when I turn this tap off, hey young, when I turn this tap off, we're gonna, oh, it stopped straight away, it's very unusual. We should get, yeah, quite a lot of hot coming out of there. But what we're also gonna do is we're gonna flush the loo. Let's run off straight away, it's actually quite nice. So we're just dissipating the pressure out of everything, out of the hot and the cold. As you can see, I've just had my bonds cut, which is why there's hair all over the floor. Uh, oh yes, there's another room that needs doing. And this will all feature on the channel, don't you worry. Just flushed away Emily's poo. She does like a big old poo, don't you, Biggies. Right, and so once everything upstairs has stopped running, we're effectively like, right, everything's kind of stopped. And we can then cut our valves in. 
Right, so I know you're probably going to see me very easily, but it doesn't matter. You don't want to see my little chitty cheeks. Right, so I'm just going to pull that up. So I want my valve to shut that way, okay? So what first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to make my first little cut here. And that's what's so good about these cutters, the fact they ratchet like this means it's really, really easy. And sometimes, so now you can hear that hissing. That is because we're allowing, we've just made a little cut in here now, and we're allowing air down and away. If we give that a bit more of a cut. If I was you at this point, I'd just leave it now. Just let it hiss, let it carry on hissing. Give it 10 minutes uh, and let all that water out. If you know what you're doing, you can just carry on cutting because you'll know you need a little jug under here or a little bit of, uh, I don't know, towel or something like that. Right, so now you might have flex. We've got a little bit of flex up. We've got a little bit of flex down. A lot of people ask me, what do you do when there's no flex? You know, you can't fit the valve if there's no flex. Well, you can. The first thing you're gonna do, right, is you're going to take off extra length out of the valve body that you don't need. That is effectively the nut and the olive that are affixed to the valve body. You don't need them here at the moment. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna take them off and we're gonna pop them onto the pipe now, okay? So that's popped on the pipe there, and we're gonna let that drop down to the bottom like that. And then we've got a nut and an olive up here. Now that there, just by doing that, has effectively shortened our valve by quite a considerable amount, probably by about 20 mil overall. So now we can say that is gonna sit on that far. If you wanted to, you can mark this with a pencil, but we now know exactly how far down it's gonna sit on here. At this point, if you want to get your other valves level and all that stuff, we can do that in a minute, okay? But let's just see how far that sits down to there, okay? And then we know exactly how far down it's going to sit on this here. We want to give ourselves enough splay, and I'll show you what I mean by that in a sec. But I've just marked that with my thumb, I don't, because I've done this so many times throughout the years. I don't have to worry about... So look, I get the centre of my pipe size, which is this line here. Push that on, roll that on, and then we're just cutting. Okay, there we go, that's that bit done. Now we can make sure that we can actually get this on. We're doing that, can we push that up? And there's, sometimes you need to have a little bit of strength to do this, sometimes you pull them away like that and then push them back in. Copper pipe can take a little bit of punishment, okay? So don't worry too much about doing that. Once you've got it in like this, I'd say the best thing you could do that's gonna really, really be the difference between you getting a watertight, nice seal that tightens up nicely without squeaking and all that. Firstly, make sure obviously that the pipes are nice and straight. But secondly, put some jointing compound on. So I've got some jointing compound just here. Just make sure you mix it up a bit, usually with a screwdriver, but you can use your finger like me if you want. I adore the smell of this stuff. And I'm gonna put quite a bit on, don't care. I'm gonna wipe it off in a minute. I'm not bothered. And we can push that all the way up and get it all the way over the olive, get it in the fitting, just like that. We've got loads on there, absolutely beautiful. And we're going to do the same just here as well. Okay. Now what I recommend you do, just push everything together. So we've got everything back down to where we want it from earlier. We push that olive up there, we push that olive down into there. Look at that, we already know we're getting a great seat. Then we just wind up our nuts. Make sure we're still tight again. Now remember, they build in quite a lot of splay, which is that distance which the pipe goes into the valve body. They're building quite a lot, don't they? So what we're gonna do, we're just gonna pop this and we do the top nut up first. So I'm just gonna grab my grips. <sighs> Look at that, not even squeaking. Move that round to where I want it, because I want it to be. And there you go. We don't need to tighten that up anymore. Spin them around the other way. Now, this one here, a little trick for you. Just get it nipped. Just nip it like that. So the olive is just gripping the pipe. And then push it up. Now it will stay in position up there. We're not putting the pipe out of position here. We know exactly how much we needed to take out, didn't we? And now it's just a matter of nipping that up. Just 
and there we go. That's our first valve installed and done. The other two are very much the same thing. So I'm sure you're aware. Now I'm just gonna line up the top of that with the top of here. I'm not bothered by getting these exactly the same height. I mean, it looks a bit nicer, I guess, but and what we're gonna do is do exactly the same thing we did earlier. Slow cut, wait for that hiss. This is what you wanna see from these cutters. Just waiting for that hiss to happen. If it happens, if it doesn't happen, there we go. So we've got that hiss now. What's happening while that's going on is it's emitting air into the top of the pipe. Now, we dissipated all the pressure, but what happens when you've got a pipe or say a straw with your thumb over the top of it or your finger over the top, it's not gonna allow the water out. So we're gonna come down here, we're probably gonna find where we should have got maybe water out of here, but that might not be the lowest point. So yeah, just keep on cutting. And with these cutters, you just run them round to that kind of open gate position like that, and then pop them off and that's it, the job's done. While we're here, we'll do the same with the hot side. So just line those up. And that's empty as well, lovely. And we use the same few tricks that we used earlier, exactly the same. Just gonna pull that out of the way, pop that nut and olive on there. Do the same with that, put the nut and olive on there. If you want, you can ream these pipes, but we're gonna be going into a slightly more tight area when you go into the valve body itself. Um, and also my ream has fallen off my cutters. <laughs> I have got another reamer, but I do it in the way it is like. So we can do our hot first. Nice little trip for you these, just to pop them on like that if you want. Get that started. If the olive keeps falling off, it can be a bit of an arse, you see. So just, just nip the olive a tiny bit like that, and that'll be enough for the olive to bite. You should find that you can still probably shuffle the olive up and down the pipe with your fingers, but it won't now fall off. Right, so we can push this on like so. We know exactly now where to cut this pipe. So that's right in there, easy. And the good thing about this is the other valve body is exactly the same size. So you know exactly how much to cut off each one of these pipes now. We're flying guys. Cut the exact same amount off this one here. Hi Sarah, how's it going? Hi mate, it's alright, how are you? I'm okay. I'm right. So now remember what I said, we can get quite a lot of flex if you can't get that height, but we're quite lucky today. Look, because now we've, we've shortened everything, haven't we, see? Look at that, pulls together just gorgeous, absolutely beautiful. That's great, really happy with that. Okay, I've only done that up just so I know that they're all good, and now we're just gonna joint and paste this one and get that popped on. Oh, I love the smell of it so much. It just reminds me of being a kid because I was working. Well, look at this photo here of me with my old man when I was, uh, I can't have been more than like, I don't know, 12, something like that. And that's, the, the, what I can smell now is, uh, is, yeah, exactly pretty much everything I had when I was a kid is just reminds me of this. So just pop that round there, look. And the thing is, you might say, oh, it's not going over the olive on the bottom bit, because it's not there yet. Don't you worry. Once we push, push that olive up, look, the olive straight away stays where it should now. You get a little bit over the olive as well, but it's already well up into that seat. Loving life. Oh, wipe the old fingers down. Give them a good sniff. <laughs> Jesus, what did I just say? <laughs> Okay, great. And then we're just pulling them together again. Just like pulling them like that. Make sure that they're together. And then we can just tighten this one up. <sighs> Brilliant. Not holding quite nicely there. But what we'll do, we'll just nip. Just nip it like that. Get, get it so we've got a little bit of nip there. Push that up. There we go. That's even further in now. And now we can give it the full final nipping up. So we can do the rest of this job. We're just gonna leave that there like that. Sorry you can't see my face today that much, guys, but I'm pretty sure you 
probably quite pleased by that, aren't you? And it's pretty much the same thing as what I did earlier. Nipping them up, making sure that you've got a nice little bit of jointing compound on there. Then nipping the top one or the bottom one up fully. And then the other nut, you just nip up a little bit and then pull the pipe through so you know that they're properly joined together before finally tightening up. Now we're not gonna put back on the insulation just yet because we're just gonna turn the water on and pressure test. So, quick little thing about pressure testing. We've got all those valves off now, but all the taps and toilets that are flushed are still yet to fill up, which means when we open up, we're gonna be next to those valves. We've got control over the situation when pressure is built. We don't wanna be up in the loft when the pressure is built. We wanna be down next to those valves so we can make sure everything's okay, so. So, that's on, I can tell you now. We have done a tiny little naughty, I guess, but we built pressure on the top nuts of every one of these now. So now we can just check these top nuts if we want. And I'll prove to you that we've got pressure here just by cracking one of these open. Hear that? There. Nothing on there because we've got a non-return valve on that, but we'll do that in a sec. Just gonna go around, we're gonna turn that off. We're gonna turn these off. But like I said, the toilets are still gonna be filling up, the cisterns are empty. Right, okay, so now let's do our pressure test. So number one, let's pressurize this side. Can you hear water going in there already? Right, so there we go, that's all full now. Okay, now we'll do the hot side. Let's just do that on its own. Should be a lot quicker, this should. And there we go, that's the hot done. And I should maybe get a bit coming up that way. There we go, all done. So you just run around underneath now, checking for leaks and all that sort of thing. But other than that, these look absolutely gorgeous. There you go then guys, all done. I've now got those valves in so I can valve on and off the water whenever I like during either an emergency or when I want to do any work in the house really, really quickly. Probably the sort of thing I should have done about 10 years ago, or, well, I haven't lived here 10 years, but, you know, five years ago, something like that. But, you know, you just get around to these jobs as and when. I'm trying to teach my darling wife that this is the way of it. There we go, it's not easy. <laughs> Um, anyway, I hope you've enjoyed the video. There's going to be loads more videos coming up from this bathroom and also from the downstairs toilet. So hit the subscribe button and make sure you hit the notification as well. We upload twice a week at the moment. We're doing midweek Wednesday videos and also we're doing Saturday longer videos, the one that you're watching at the moment. We've also got over 400 videos on plumbing back on the channel. So ban the subscribe button, have a look through what we've done in the past and I'll see you in the next Plumber Parts video. Remember, if there's one thing you've got to do, that's old tight. And also, I did insulate those pipes. There we go. Anyway, have a great weekend, guys. I'll see you soon. Hold tight. Thanks ever so much for watching all the way to the end, everyone. Please subscribe to my vlog channel, Times of James. Please subscribe to our videos. Watch our very latest video to catch up with what we're doing with Plumber Parts right now. And also join the Ale Army for Thursday night live streams, beer, chit-chat, and fun as well.